Welcome to homecampus.com.sg. This is a lesson on multiplying by tens, hundreds and thousands. Actually multiplying a whole number by tens or hundreds or thousands is a fairly easy thing to do. But what makes it interesting or it becomes interesting when you are trying to uh, use it to estimate the product of two or more whole numbers uh, in certain cases. And we'll see that in a bit. Okay. So let me start, let me start with the simple example. Let's try to do some computation first and see and try to figure out if there's a pattern when you multiply by 10 or 100 or 1000. Okay. So let me give you a number like say, you know, you have something like 43. Okay. So you have 43 and you try to multiply it by, by 10. So 43 multiplied, multiplied by 10. Okay. 43 multiplied by 10 means you're saying 43 times 10. So 43 multiplied by 10 is simply 43 times 10, which is equal to 43 times 10. Okay, this is how you write it. When you say 43 times 10, it's 43 times multiplied by 10 or 43 times 10. And that is equal to 43 tens, right? 43 times 10 is 43 tens and 43 tens means 430. So you see, when you say 43 times 10, it means 430. Now let me try to do, let me multi try to multiply this number by 100, okay? And let's see what we get now. So we, we're trying to do 43 multiplied by 100 okay in this case now when you say 43 multiplied by 100 you say it's 43 what you're trying to do is 43 times 100 now 43 times 100 is written as 43 times 100 and that simply means 4300 right now 4300 you know is 4300 that's 4300 or 4300 but when you uh, but what this means is you are simply trying to do 43 times 100 and that gave you 4300. Okay, now let's try to do, you know, try to multiply the same number 43 by 1000, okay? So what you're trying to do is 43 multiplied by 1000. Now when you say 43 multiplied by 1000, what you're saying is 43 times 1000. And 43 times 1,000 is 43 times 1,000, right? And that is equal to 43,000. Anything multiplied by 1,000 will give you that many thousands. So 43 times thousands is equal to 43,000. And how you write 43,000 is 43 and the three zeros for thousands. So you have 43,000 is equal to four, three, and then followed by three zeros. Okay, so, so what's the pattern here? Well, the pattern is that, you know, when you had only one zero, when you were multiplying by 10, you had only one zero in the result. Okay, and the result is called the product. When you multiply two numbers, the result that you get is called the product. So 430 here is the product, okay? So what you saw, what you observed is, when you multiply a number by 10, the product will have one zero. When you multiply a number by 100, the product will have two zeros. And when you multiply a number by 1000, the product will have three zeros. Now this is something really, really super easy and it's not really exciting, but what makes it exciting, what, what makes it interesting is that, you know, if you are, if you're given two numbers and you ask to multiply those two numbers, what you can do is you can try to simplify those two numbers by breaking them into like, you know, into smaller bits or pieces and then try to multiply them in a certain way. Okay. I'll, I'll show you. Let's start with an example. Actually, if you see an example, it'll come clear. It'll become uh, clear to you. So say we have something like 62 times 300. Okay, we just saw that all you have to do when you're multiplying by 100 is add two zeros in the end. But this time it's not 100. This is 300 and that's much different. Okay, but you can make it, you can simplify it, convert it so that it becomes multiplied by 100 instead of 300. So you can change it to something like this. You say 62 and you know that 300 is equal to 3 times 100. So all you do is make it 3 times 100. So now your, uh, uh, your the, the, the numbers given to you become 
62 times 3 times 100. Okay, and that's the same as 62 times 300. Now, what you have to do is calculate 62 times 3 and just add two zeros in the end because that's what multiplying by 100 is. So now you're, you've broken down the number to 62 times 3 times 100. Now, it's simple to calculate 62 times 3. So all you do is 62 times 3. So 3 times 2 is 6 and 3 times 6 is 18. So 62 times 3 becomes... So you have your 62 times 3, that becomes 186. And then you simply multiply it by 100. And for that, we know that we only have to add two zeros to this number. So 62 times 300 actually becomes 18600 or 18,600. Now this is still quite simple because you can see the, the two zeros for hundreds. It's quite obvious, so you know that you have to multiply it by hundred. But in certain cases, it's not that obvious. Say for example, you're given a number such as uh, say you're multiplying 12 times 25. Now there are no zeros here. So how do you simplify this? Well, for that, for starters, what you do is you try to simplify the number 12. Okay. Actually, when you see numbers like 5 or 20 or 25 or 50, I mean, it's always very easy to uh, to make them to 10 or 100. How is, like, you know, if you have 25, then you know that 25 times 4 is 100. If you have 50, then you know that 50 times 2 is 100. If you have a number like 5, then you know that 5 times 2 is 10. If you have 20, then you know that 20 times 5 is 100. So, you know, it's very easy to convert 25 or 50 or 5 or 20 to 100 or 10. So, you, what you do is, you know, you try to simplify the other number, which in our case, for example, here is 12, into another number such that, you know, that will give you 100 when multiplied by say 25. So what I'm trying to say is like, you know, let's break down 12. So 12 can be broken down into 3 times 4, right? 3 times 4 is 12. Now what you do is to complete the equation, to complete the, 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 the statement, you have 12 times 25 is equal to 3 times 4 times 25. And this 3 times 4 comes from the 12 here, okay? Now what you do next is break it down into something like this, okay? So you have 3 as such and then you multiply 4 and 25, okay? So 4 and 25, when multiplied, give you 100. So eventually this becomes 3 times 100. Now 3 times 100 we know is equal to 300. So that's it. So 12 times 25 becomes 300. How? After breaking down in this way. So there you go. You didn't need to use a calculator to get this, uh, the, to get the result. That's how easy it is. Okay, let's try to practice a bit more with a few more examples, okay? So say you have something like 60 times 40. Well, 60 times 40, you actually, when you say 60 and, when you see 60 and 40, there's a zero in 60, there's a zero in 40. You can either break down both these numbers, in which case you will get 6 times 10 for 60 and 4 times 10 for 40. So you have 6 times 10, times 4 times 10. So what you can do is regroup the numbers, okay? So you regroup after regrouping, what you do is you group 6 and 4 together. So you get 6 times 4 and then you group 10 times 10, okay? Now another group. So you have 10 times 10. So what you get is 6 times 4 is 24 and 10 times 10 is 100. So there you go. It's very easy now. 24 times 100 is 2400 or 2400. Well, another way of doing this is to break down only one of these numbers. Okay, so you break either 60 to 6 times 10 or you break 40 to 4 times 10 or, you know, and, and then uh, do the multiplication. But I find it easier to break down both the numbers and then carry out the multiplication. Okay, well, let's uh, do one more example. Say you're doing 2000 times 2000. Okay, let's break down both these numbers. So the first number when broken is 2 times 1000. And the next number when broken, since it's 2000 also, is again 2 times 1000. Okay, let's regroup. So this 2 comes here, then this 2 comes here. Then you have the 1000 
which comes from here and then the next thousand which comes from here okay so you have two times two times one thousand times one thousand so what will you group well obviously you group two and two and two and two is two times two is four and then you have one thousand times one thousand and that gives you one million okay it's six zeros so the product becomes four million so there you go now there are six zeros because three zeros come from this 2000 and three zeros come from this 2000 so you have three thousand uh, three zeros and three zero six zeros all together okay so that's how easy it is but actually again as I said you know this is not as interesting in itself as you know when you are using this to to do estimation so let's uh, let's try to do some estimations okay so say I give you an example say say I give you a word problem okay and the word problem is suppose there were 608 visitors that a certain art museum received in one day okay and you are asked to uh, estimate the number of visitors that visited the art center or the art museum in the entire month of January okay so you now the catch word here is estimate it's not saying compute exactly it's saying just compute roughly or just estimate so what that means is you don't care about the exact figure you only care about the rough figure okay so 608 visitors in one day so how many days are there in January well January has 31 days so if 608 visitors in one day then how many uh, visitors in the month of January well that means you have to calculate or estimate 600 times 31 now I don't want to know the exact figure I only want to know the approximate or I only want to estimate how many visitors so what we do here is we round off these two numbers okay 608 and also 31 so 608 when rounded off to the nearest 100 gives you 600 and 31 when rounded off to the nearest 10 gives you 30 now this I'm sure you'll agree is much more simpler to compute okay so 600 times 30 can further be broken down to 6 times 100 because that's 600 and 3 times 10 now we simply regroup these things these numbers here so we have 6 times 3 and then 100 times 10 so 6 times 3 is 18 and 100 times 10 is 1000 so what you get is 18 times 1000 and that is equal to 18,000 so 608 times 31 is approximately equal to 18,000 so how we write that down is 608 times 31 is approximately equal to 18,000 and so 18,000 is the number is the rough estimate okay so 18,000 is roughly how many visitors the art museum got in the month of January okay so that's uh, that's uh, what makes multiplying by tens hundreds and thousands exciting is you know you can use it to estimate uh, the product of uh, two or more numbers in certain cases all right so that uh, brings us to the end of this lesson so how about you go and do some practice exercises now okay visit www.homecampus dot com dot sg for practice exercises this is m signing off for now bye bye